Welcome to today's game, everybody, and today we are playing Battles of Westeros, which is the tactical battle game for Game of Thrones. Today we're doing the scenario Assault from Crakefall, which I'm told is made up for the game, but that's alright. And we have Baratheon versus Lannister. The Baratheon forces are made up of a lot of cavalry on the flanks, with mixed infantry and archers in the middle. Let's see what the player plans to do with them. Hi there friends, my name is Paul Suda and I'm actually the uh, fight designer and producer of Tower of Joy, a Game of Thrones fan film, you might have seen it online. We did the Tower of Joy fight, uh, Arthur Dane, High Tower, and Wen versus Ned Stark and his friends. I'm a friend of Jeff's actually, so it was great to get invited to play. Uh, my first experience with Game of Thrones actually wasn't the books, it was actually the Fantasy Flight board game, the original first edition of the Fantasy Flight board game, so I was super excited to play Battles of Westeros, I haven't played it before. Uh, Jeff asked me what uh, side I wanted to play, and I said Baratheon, because um, I always felt like in the in the in the books and in the show too, Baratheon, like both Renly and Stannis, never quite got their chance to shine and do what they're best at. So I wanted to see if we can get some redemption. This is my first time playing Battles of Westeros, and something I've noticed, which is very similar to the Fantasy Flight Game of Thrones board game, is that the order structure has everything to do with how many choices you have. So. I'm not super familiar with the structure of how the game works, um, but I'm, I like mobility and getting to objectives first. There's two objective icons on the board. I'm trying to get to at least one of them first and hold on to it because if you get, if you have t two of yours and one of your opponents, then you get reinforcements. If I can keep bleeding reinforcements in, I can overwhelm Jeff with numbers. It's my objective. Lannister is made up of a lot of heavy infantry and a couple of heavy cavalry in the front, with some cavalry in reserve. I'm Jeff MacArthur, I'm an author and I run this channel, and today I'm going to be playing uh, the Lannisters, and I'm going to try to keep them as much together as possible. Their advantages seem to be in their numbers, or at least in their commanders staying close to their uh, units. Uh, they seem to be able to provide a lot of bonuses for that, that sort of thing. So I'm going to try to keep that wall. They start off really in a straight line. I'm going to try to keep that wall as much as possible, try to move them up, together as much as possible, utilize those uh, bonuses and just see how it goes. So here's the setup. On the Baratheon side, you have Robert Baratheon with a lot of cavalry there at the bottom, their right flank. Davos Seaworth is holding up the center with his smugglers and some regular infantry. They're not as heavy as the Lannister troops, but they have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. And on the left, you got Brienne of Tarth leading some infantry and Renly Baratheon leading cavalry. Their cavalry are their best troops, and since they're on the flanks, Watch for them doing a pincer movement. The Lannisters are led by Jaime Lannister on their left, Kevin Lannister is holding the center, and Gregor Clegane, also known as the Mountain, is holding the right. The Mountain is personally very tough, and he has some really heavy infantry on their right, so that's going to be a strong front over there. Kevin Lannister is a very good leader, but he'll have to stay in close proximity with his troops in order to lend them his abilities. And Jaime Lannister is all about killing the enemy leader. So watch for him trying to find Robert Baratheon in the fray. Meanwhile, the reserves are led by Tywin Lannister, and since it's all cavalry, they'll probably be plugging up whatever holes appear in the Lannister line. Let's get this battle started! Alright, opening volley, and they have moved their archers up to shoot at us, and took out one of our units, and we shot back and took out one of their units. I guess that's sort of standard at the beginning with archers shooting each other. Rinley moved his cavalry up, they took one of the objectives, now they, you can't say it now because it's, it's uh, gone past there, but they pushed these guys back, hit them pretty hard, but the mountain then went, and the mountain used uh, this card, which gave him uh, one unit to come back, which is why they're now at full strength again, and smacked them pretty hard and sent them back. Baratheon came up here, hit the archer, and he got one archer, but then we came back and killed two horses. Baratheon is moving up there on the left, that's, or the, our right, the, their left. 
Uh, that's Davos is uh, sending the command, and Bra uh, and uh, Lannister sent these uh, archers up onto the hill and made some of them retreat. Sort of a midterm thing, and a lot of people are just simply moving up, everybody moving along, and oh my god, they're getting hit by a lot of cavalry! They got all of them, except one single guy is just holding on. He's like, no, no, you will not kill me, you will not take my life. They can't retreat either, so they're killed even on flags. Hated the world of humanity of the thing. He had the stick pointed at one guy, but then they came from the other side. Ah! Oh my goodness. So I get oh, this thing? Yeah. Like the flag? Is that what I get? I yes. Get flag. And okay. it just goes to your side. So and flag is a point, yes. Exactly, All exactly. Right. And this goes two to me. Ow! Oh, because of oh, when you... morale, yeah. So the blue is two? Yep. And the uh, cavalry just continues right on through <laughs> and slaughters right to the green. And he's laughing behind. Cut la! Cut la! <laughs> no! stays his ground and the attack uh, is stopped by the Kingslayer he stops them and goes ah you're not gonna take me you take all my other guys instead So we're at the end of the turn, and uh, Baratheon is doing good on the left, their right, uh, while the Lannisters are doing well on the right, the uh, opposite left. opponent's yeah. left. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of, although I would actually say Baratheon's doing a little bit better because they that cavalry just went through, slaughtered them, and now that he is on the flank. Uh, of the right, Kingslayer. Yeah, right by the Kingslayer, Jamie Lannister. And so he could actually take out a leader pretty soon. Looks like the uh, Lannister uh, reserves might be heading that direction. Um, we uh, have all along the line, the uh, two sides are almost to each other. While Lannisters, yes, they did hurt this unit, they did not take it out. And in fact, as you can see, Baratheon has that uh, space, that sp command space, and that command space, which means Baratheon gets reinforcements for this next turn, so they are going to appear right there. Lannisters are just going to have to suck it for right now. Um, but here's what's going to be interesting, is that the Lan the uh, Baratheon have outrun some of their commanders, so these guys will be out of command, they will have to use uh, individual commands to continue, so that'll be interesting to see, whereas Lannisters continues to stay in command and has one straight line. So it's going to see it'd be interesting in this next turn to see how that all plays out. Smugglers sneaked up on the archers and pushed them back. And over here, the mountain was going to have a gigantic turn. He rushed up behind this unit, was going to slaughter these guys. Uh, in fact, who is that specific guy? Is that Renly. 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 He was going to slaughter <laughs> Renly, but he only pushed them back. These guys did kill the unit that was up there. We're not able to advance. These guys were going to go up and slaughter them because this was this card, and he used all three of those, so he got an extra movement. That's why that one unit was able to go further. And plus one to hit. Plus, he has these two things, so he was able to do one of these for free, uh, but these guys only pushed them back. So, such a pity. Could have been such a big... I mean, he did pretty good, but man, he could have really, really slaughtered them there. is not your suit your strong suit this particular time no rolling has not been f uh, my ally even uh, but it has been baratheon's ally here they took out the mountain's escorts they're not going to quite take out the mountain quite yet he has a very well he's very tough let's put it that way 
But meanwhile, these guys played this card, uh, the uh, uh, Lannister played this card. Again, this is going to just really do a ton. It's like, order two archers, and the archers who don't move get a fire twice. So they fired and caused them to retreat. Then these guys fired and killed one guy. <laughs> just not doing very much at all. Lannisters are, uh, are really not uh, hitting the Baratheon and quite as hard as Baratheon's hitting Lannister. These Baratheon uh, scum sliced through this unit, caused them to retreat, went from full just down to one, but then Kevin got activated, turned this one guy into Rambo, he came slicing back at them and took out two units. Haha. -ha. It did nothing. This turn uh, happened over here. These guys, yep, shot, shot at uh, Jamie's. And these guys here came up here and hit and got another point. It's currently uh, four points, or no, two points. You just get one per unit. Two, two points. We are tied up. Robert Barassian is moving up. And this cavalry came up here, is hitting those axe guys, and just pursued them uh, until they were dead. So the mountain being the only thing left is getting hit by all of that Baratheon cavalry and he's just going fighting them back and forth. Now they did in one turn, you have to, they have to hit him four times in one single hit. Uh, and they got him three times one of the times but didn't quite take him down. So the mountain is living up to his name. Meanwhile, they brought their reinforcements up as well. So that brings us to the end of the turn actually where actually it's kind of worked a bit like uh, we were thinking. Actually, were you gonna point something out here? Just making sure that there's nothing I can move. Nothing I'm good. Uh, over here, actually, the uh, Lannisters have kind of come back a little bit on their left. They're uh, just kind of holding on the right. They're not continuing to do much. Uh, however, the Baratheons have gone back onto that uh, objective, so they are going to get more reinforcements. Um, and a lot of what happened with the Baratheons, kind of what we were talking about, where they, they kind of out, uh, got moved out of the range of their commanders. So they really weren't able to follow through on the attack on the, on the right, but he did bring that up. He's bringing the other commanders up. So this next turn, Baratheons are probably going to have quite a bit to do. Uh, but Lannisters as well, they're, they're ba able to hold their own. It's turned into kind of a Lannister defense and Baratheon attack. And the Baratheons are coming around on the two sides. So should be interesting. It's going pretty nicely. I'm happy with how the dice are rolling in my favor. I've gotten a pretty good variety of kinds of orders I can use to give me flexibility on the field. I've managed to wrap around both flanks and I have one objective, so I'm getting the reinforcements every single turn. Wow, they jumped at us. I really wasn't expecting that. I mean, the one advantage is at least we still are keeping that line I was hoping. We've had to create sort of a defensive uh, perimeter, um, but as a result of them really taking that initiative, they are now wrapping us around us on both flanks and uh, it, it's looking a little bit hairy for us. So Rinley made a brave, daring attack. He went off of here, came over here, attacked, killed a couple of those guys, and they just mauled them. The mountain and the other, well, first the others went in there, killed uh, Rinley's uh, guard, and the mountain comes in, crushes his head, totally destroys him, but he gets to flip his card, which means that he is not, he gets to flip the card. Uh, if he flipped this card of an attack, would eliminate run this unit. His unit instead remains unharmed, and the morale of his house has been increased by two. So this is... In the Battle of the Blackwater, um, after Renly was murdered by the Shadow, one of the Lannister people put on his armor and was fighting Stannis' troops, and it scared the hell out of them. It's because they thought like, they were fighting a ghost of Renly. Okay, so this is it. We're fighting now the ghost, ghost of, of Renly. <laughs> And Baratheon came up on the flank and did not get hits. However, it was a flanking maneuver, so he got the uh, red, two re reds. Rolled. Re rolled two greens and slaughtered him. Now it's pursuit, so he's going to continue on. And their advance was stalled right there at the river. And notice now that the mountain is cut off from some of his men. Meanwhile, over here, uh, Jamie 
came in, uh, made the uh, cavalry retreat, and they got hit a little bit from uh, some infantry down there. <laughs> we joined the battle already in progress. Robert Baratheon came up here. Actually, he hit a unit that was there, made them retreat. He actually killed a bunch of them. Made them retreat. Who was it? Was it these guys? Yeah, made them retreat over there. Uh, then continued on, had pursuit, went at Jamie. He has a special cool thing where uh, basically if he gets three of the same color, he wipes out the entire unit no matter who's there, so he would have destroyed them. Didn't manage to take, uh, do that, but then he sent this heavy cavalry around, got up on the hill, flanked Jamie, took out his entire escort, and has caused him to retreat, so he's coming back onto the objective here. And they get pursuit, so they are going to continue on this fight. And phew, he found out that uh, these guys are just honorable, they do not have pursuit. They're too honorable to pursue, so Jamie <laughs> is still there and alive and one-handed. <laughs> Actually, he still has both hands at this point. Jamie attacked Robert. Robert realizes Jamie, he has a bonus against uh, commanders, so he went running. Ay, 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 ay. And Jamie ay, 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 sent ay. these guys over. They had already rallied them and sent them after the cavalry, and they hit, but then they were told, oh no, we have heavy armor, and so they didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So this cavalry came in, pushed the mountain back. Now his back is against the river, and he had a unit behind him, but that unit has been pushed back by these axemen, who now turned on the mountain and went to attack them, and they need four hits at one time. Retreats count as casualties, but they had the green. But since they were flinking, they got to re-roll the green again, and it came up green again. So he is trapped now around Renly and his men, but not quite dead. He just keeps on fighting. I gotta show where he, here we go. That's that, that is that uh, monstrosity right there. Not quite, z oh yeah, good, he knows lighting. Not quite uh, z Zombie Mountain yet, but close enough. Lannister archers come back by shooting down two men right there. Two of the, uh, the what, was, what are they called? Smugglers, right in front of them. Yeah, so outlaws. Han Solo's been taken down. More cavalry going after the, uh, the mountain. All the reinforcements going after him. Just everything. It's like the Bismarck. Kill the mountain. Kill the Bismarck, yeah. <laughs> and then over here came up and tried to shoot that one guy remaining, but didn't get it. This is pretty huge. Well, not because of here, because of course they're just continuing to gang up on the mountain, and the mountain is just like, oh, I'm big and tough and I have a huge reach, and I'm just gonna kick all your asses. Uh, but over here, this uh, green light cavalry is beating up on this heavy cavalry that was here, caused them to retreat to, pursued them, and took them down. Light cavalry taking out heavy cavalry. You don't see that every day. And they ran into pikemen who uh, actually kind of smashed them pretty hard. It was one single uh, stand left, and now they've taken them down to one stand. So archers are picking some people off, as are the smugglers. Davos came up and killed some guys, and some of the people on the hill, some of the archers on the hill were killed. That brings us to the end of turn three, and this has gotten very interesting here. Actually, as you can see, uh, Baratheon has really done well on both flanks. I mean, they uh, wrapped around here. Now, uh, Bra uh, now um, Lannister's doing their best to um, plug up that hole with their cavalry, but they still are on the side there, and they have Jaime right where they want him. Over here, they are really uh, clogged up with the uh, the mountain there. To go figure, the mountain is clogging something, but. Um, you know, so they, they are stuck uh, with them, but they have wrapped around this thing. You do have some Lannister over here, but they pretty much control that flank, and they've made a breakthrough right here. Now, of course, again, they've lost some cavalry there, but as you can see, there is a hole that they've broken through. The Lannisters are basically just defending and holding in this little area. I mean, they have a few guys over here, and they're in heavy armor and everything, and again, they're sort of slowing them down, but that's really all it is, is they're slowing them, while meanwhile, they're uh, creating this defensive position and uh, Baratheon is just coming through there. What, how do you think it's going? Feeling pretty good about it. I mean, the mountain keeps not dying, but other than that, things are going okay. The dice are good. The dice are on my side today. They're doing well. All right. Well, so let's see how turn four is going to go.
They continue to go after uh, the mountain. Uh, he, at this point, he's just sort of committed. He just kind of needs to. Although uh, it makes me remember, uh, makes me think of Stalingrad. All right, and then over here, this uh, this cavalry moved on over here, and right down here, this uh, infantry took down this cavalry. It's kind of bottom feeding. Robert came up with his uh, escort and uh, killed that guy, and as revenge, Jamie uh, rallied his uh, horsemen to run up there, and they pursued him to the ends of the earth. Actually, the idea was supposed to be they'd come in and wound him, and they'd come in on the other side and wound him, and Jamie would come in for the final blow and kill him, but instead these guys made him retreat all the way back to there. Killed off his escort, but now he kind of got away from Jamie. Jamie, who was here, kind of was like, uh, guys, oopsie. Guys, guys, uh, there's all this cavalry here. I'm gonna just kind of go over here. So that's the way that flank looks like now. It's kind of opened up to them because we were pursuing uh, Robert Baratheon. Also, I just noticed that the mountain, I've, yeah, I've been laughing about the mountain thing here, but he is actually serving a purpose. He's holding that objective. Jamie was holding that objective, but he's not quite as brave as the mountain, and he went running behind that hill. Thinks that'll protect him. Uh, up in the center, all the action this time happened in the center. Davos came up and whittled down the archers, and uh, Kevin came up and utilized the archers to come back and kill a unit that was right there. And now, Kevin and uh, Davos are right next to each other. All right, over here, this cavalry just chased Kevin Lannister's men all over the eternity and whittled it down just to him. Uh, and over here, the mountain came and attacked. Uh, he ordered his other units across the field to uh, go in after them, and he flanked. And with all of these dice from flanking and from him getting to re-roll on our roll extra dice with flags, he still hasn't taken him down. So uh, it was just a couple very frustrating almost points there. Archers taking pot shots across over here, not doing anything, but the mountain takes on Renly, goes up to him, and stabs him in the heart. <sighs> no more uh, ghost Renly for you. But he's still oh, standing. He was lame anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, Renly resting, not so peace. Meanwhile, Brienne right there, no! Oh, oh and she saw it all. She saw everything. She was right there. She's she going to have to go get... Everything. She'll have to get revenge. There's a gap now. By the way, in that hit, one thing that was kind of cool was he had... He just was one short of actually doing it, but the uh, the mountain gets this special thing where when he rolls a flag, he rolls an extra thing... Uh, or rolls an extra die. And I just realized I didn't flip this. So uh, when I kill something, flip this card after Gregor's unit eliminates a unit to roll four dice. For each increaser, oh, okay, so I might get extra morale from this, so I'll just go ahead and do that. Cavalry went after Jamie and managed to cause him to retreat onto that hill, but he's not dead yet. These guys went after them and killed them off. Oh, by the way, everybody cheered when the uh, mountain killed Renly and um, the morale went up by one, which actually is rather appropriate that that's where their morale goes up. In the rest of this turn, this cavalry came around, uh, uh, light cavalry going after the heavy cavalry, just did a little bit of damage. These guys went after Robert Baratheon. These guys went after the horses on the flank and uh, almost took them out, but didn't quite. Over here, some archers uh, picked off one of the archer units here. And over here, the uh, mountain continued to just hold that. So here we are at the end of turn four. We got only one turn left. And at this point, it's hard to say that there's really so much of, uh, you know, a flanking or strategy or fronts. It's just big slugfest big slugfest going on i mean just m a massive uh brawl going on all along the front a lot of one stand units you probably see them go next turn it's really going to come down to those points of who can hold on to those points and win this game by the way one thing that might have been confusing to everybody you might have noticed some of the units on the lannister side went twice that's because at one point they had this card rally all units so basically they used up all of their points, got their, all their units going, and then rallied all of them and got to move them again. So that's why all of that happened.
And uh, Robert uh, kicked some of these guys out and pushed them around, uh, made them go back this way. And so they came back around, attacked over here, made some of them go back that way, but did actually kill one of their uh, uh, one of their cavalry units. So right now, the score actually is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe that is. It's wherever flags to one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and they're still actually uh, we're on our own objective so it's that's the score right now uh, six to eight and we have the momentum actually the uh, Lannisters actually went first this turn this cavalry went after that cavalry there and their heavy armor is protecting them they would have killed them several times over but the heavy cav the, the heavy uh, armor has protected them Brienne vengeful about Renly being killed by the mountain goes in and gives her men the order to go in and kill him gives them bonuses but they are not king of the mountain they, he continues to stand there and and swings his button in their face Ooh. the mountain turns and takes down an entire unit of cavalry a fresh unit Davos goes after a unit causes them to retreat and more smugglers go up here and can't take down the archers. Robert Baratheon tries to take out that cavalry, did actually take down two of them, almost destroyed them, but they just had enough left to go out after them. Uh, they attacked, the heavy armor once again protected them, but they got a, a reroll because it's a flank. That reroll hit took them down, one more point. And this is the situation at the end of the battle. Uh, the last things that happened, actually Lannister ran out of movements uh, before Baratheon did. Baratheon came up uh, mostly in the center here. They sent their cavalry around, uh, took out one more unit, uh, and the, their momentum kind of stopped. Over here they whittled them down a little bit, and they whittled down a little bit of this, uh, these archers here. The final score was uh, Baratheon 7, Lannister 10, uh, it mostly seems to have uh, come down to those flanks. Over here, the Lannisters did finally manage to break through, um, and the mountain held over here on the right. The Baratheon was, were doing well in the center. In fact, if this battle had continued, it really would have become almost like Baratheon over here, Lannisters over here. But it just, it almost seems impossible to take down the mountain. Except you did have Brienne there. I would have really liked to have seen something happen between them, but maybe something will happen romantically. Oh, the dice totally screwed me at the end. That's one thing I, I noticed, but it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't the dice that were the reason that I didn't win in terms of points. I committed really hard, really early and spread myself out. And what ended up happening was when I didn't get the individual colored orders that I needed and had to rely on the, the, the command cards, I noticed that my commanders weren't anywhere near the forces that they were best suited to command. So because everything was scattered for me, I had so much less flexibility and there were there was at least two turns where units that I had were kind of left hanging or stranded, either because I didn't have a single order for them or because the commander that could be, make, make best use of them wasn't anywhere near them. So um, I, I felt like, oh and oh, the biggest thing, the biggest mistake that I made was I committed way too many units to bothering the mountain. Even a big leader like the mountain is only worth one point. I mean, in this case, he was worth two points because he was, he was planted on top of the objective. Good job, Jeff, by the way. And if you play this game, put the mountain on top of the objective. Do that. Go ahead and do it. Um, and I, I didn't get to use Brienne enough or Robert Baratheon enough. Those slow-moving units, I just wasn't patient enough to keep a good line and let the slow units strengthen that line. That game did not go as I had expected. In fact, it really turned into a brawl there at the end, but uh, we managed to pull it out. And I think the primary reason actually wasn't anything that I did. Uh, yes, our commanders were able to give a lot of their bonuses to the troops because they were close to them, etc., etc. But really, uh, the whole thing with the mountain over there, I was impressed with that. That ended up turning into sort of a Stalingrad, if you know World War II. That's the, uh, what the situation was. The mountain is so hard to take down. Um, and basically was able to just sort of hold that uh, entire flank and Baratheon kept going in there and committing troops and basically committed his entire force to that side um, and so I was able to attack other areas and managed to win points in various areas and that's really why I won but anyway it was great having this game with Paul um, he really knows his stuff when it comes to Game of Thrones so I'm so glad that he got to be a part of this and see uh, 
how this game goes and really sort of share with us his knowledge of the game. So hope you all enjoyed it too. Well, that game really went back and forth. Thank you all for joining us for it. And if you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe, tell your friends about us, and join us on Facebook and Twitter. Also, you can join us on Patreon, where you can support this channel and see bonus material. Thanks for watching, and happy gaming, everybody! Did you like this video? Then be sure to subscribe to see more and share us with your friends. Also, if you'd like to support us financially or just give us a tip, consider a donation on Patreon. A little donation from each of our viewers helps us expand the videos, keeps the channel going, and helps us make more of them. You also get bonus videos and a big thank you from us. Happy gaming, everybody!